Randall Hughes with God Glorified, and we're talking about points about Matthew 28, 19, and why it should not be considered a name of God or a formula for baptism. And uh, the point that I want to share with you right now is one that I believe is very critical. It's a biblical-based method of hermeneutics. And had a class some time back with Dallas Seminary, and the professor made the statement that this is an Old Testament principle. It's not just an Old Testament principle. It is a Bible principle. And it is in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word should be established. And so uh, just to, to share some of the passages, this was first established in Genesis. In Genesis uh, chapter 41, uh, Joseph told Pharaoh that the reason the dream occurred twice was because it was established of the Lord. It's Genesis chapter 41, verse 32. And then in Numbers 35, verse 30, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 6, Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15 to 20, we read about you can't put somebody to death under the mouth of one witness. It takes two or three witnesses collaborating together. Uh, this is confirmed in the New Testament in the trial of Jesus. We see that occurring uh, in each of those occurrences, there are those that were false witnesses against Jesus, and yet they could not get two to, to agree together, and so they couldn't put him to death until they heard him say that he was the Son of God, and hereafter shall you see me standing on the right hand of power, coming in glory. And so uh, that was what they, they put him to death based on the words that he said in front of them, not on their ability to put a witness together against him, because they weren't able to do that. But in the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 18 verses 16 through 20 we read uh, the words of Jesus that he's establishing this or re-establishing re in the New Testament this very same pr principle and it's chapter uh, 18 verse 16 uh, through 20. Uh, this is talking about actually you'd probably want to start at verse uh, 15 he says if a brother has trespassed against thee go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone if he hears thee thou hast gained a brother but if he hears thee not, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And he shall, if he shall neglect to hear them, tell him to under the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto him as a heathen man or a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever things ye bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever things ye loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two or three, or excuse me, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so Jesus established this as two or three witnesses to establish every word. And uh, in John chapter 8, uh, this is also reiterated by Jesus there in John chapter 8, verses 17 to 18. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13 is one, uh, many feel there's a lost letter to the Corinthians. Uh, and that 2 Corinthians is really 3 Corinthians. And this last chapter of 2 Corinthians verse 1 says, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And so, uh, very critical, hermeneutics. And so, no one verse should be the foundation of a doctrine. There should be two or three verses that to establish that doctrine. And so, to say that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is somehow a name of God based on one verse, as I mentioned earlier, it's in the same category as Exodus 34 and 14. And I'll just read that for you here. And that verse says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, that's all cap, or Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. And it's clear that, I mean, it uses his divine name. It uses the covenant name, the only proper name of God in the Old Testament. And so it's clear that it's talking about the reputation. But we don't think of Jealous as a name for God. And no more should we think of Matthew 28, 19, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as a name for God. Uh, as we've been discussing, it is declaring that Jesus is the name. Jesus was the name they baptized in when the disciples obeyed Matthew 28, 19. They spoke the name Jesus. 
over their converts that they baptized. When they taught in the New Testament, they taught in Jesus' name. We have no record of them ever teaching. Uh, no apostle, no disciple, no believer, no unbeliever ever speaking the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost after Jesus said it in Matthew 28, 19. And so it's not repeated. We don't have two or three witnesses. Uh, there's other passages, 1 Timothy 5, 19, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. It all fails if there's not two witnesses or three, two or more. And so uh, it's never repeated in the Bible in spite of teachings, in spite of baptisms. And so consequently, Matthew 28, 19 should not be seen as a name, as a formula for baptism, uh, because it fails this two-witness point.